Please silence your cell phones for the courtesy of others. All right, I hit the button. Where are we at? Try and look happy. Where are we at? Yeah, try and look happy. <laughs> Quick, they're watching now. Probably lighten us up in chat. It says we're live. There we are. Man, that took a while on the YouTube side of things. Hey, we are live on Twitch. All right. We're all good. We're balling. We're tonight. here. We're here. Aunt Becky's a lion bastard. Welcome to Talking Heads. <laughs> Your once weekly show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm Rhett. How's it going, everyone? Uh, let me know what you're drinking down in comments below. Uh, yeah. If we both look a little bit tired, I, I think we've, we're both kind of... Eh. It's been, it's been one of those days. One of those weeks. One of those weeks. One of those weeks. Yeah, we're... Uh, is that a t-shirt? It is a t-shirt. Unfortunately, a friend of mine found this in some random store in, like, Seattle and had to buy it uh, for me. And so it, it's not an official t-shirt. It's not an official t-shirt. Uh, but I might just steal the logo or steal the design and put my own logo on it. Right, and yeah. Remarket it. So, yeah. Uh, soon. Also, soon. Also, just take a look at how jacked Jeff looks right now. <laughs> I like this shirt, man. <laughs> it does. It looks really good. And what's funny, too, is you told me about it, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a great shirt. Literally, he wore it in Vegas and got like a bunch of people like, hey, that's a great shirt. That's a gr awesome shirt. I love that shirt. That is, they didn't even know who I was. It was just, yeah. I love that shirt, man. Yeah. That is so cool. So, yep. And it makes me look buff. So, I'll take it. It does. It does. I'll take it. Uh, what do we got on tap tonight? You tell me, my man. I was, I was excited. <laughs> this came out of my fridge, chocolate. I guess. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we are drinking tonight, uh, 21st Amendment Brewery, uh, Brew Free or Die, Blood Orange IPA, which I can't remember if we've had on this show before. I feel like we have. I feel like maybe we have. We've had a couple different blood oranges. We've had a Kells Blood Orange, and I feel like we might have had this one already. But you know what? It looked darn good in the store. Yeah, it does. And it's got a great label. You can't go wrong with 21st. Nope. <coughs> no, you cannot. Thank you, sir. You You're welcome. Let's see. Jeff stream seems to be going well so far. Would be a shame if something were to happen to it. I don't know what that means. Like. It's Alan, and he spells it wrong still. Uh, Burn. Let's see, uh, we got a Tricera hops. We got a Gibson's finest. Is that Abe Lincoln on the beer can? It certainly Absolutely is. Absolutely is, my man. Simple Dale's Pale Ale. Oh, I'm gonna have a little bit of leftover. That's right. Oof. Yeah, these are bomber cans. These are. Uh, one pint, four ounce, I believe. It smells so good. Here, we got to cheers this so I can actually taste it. Absolutely. Sorry. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers and to cheers you to you all. Mm. Oh, that orange is... That is good. Ooh. That is good. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It's like orange juice with a little bit of vodka mixed in. It's almost like a beer mimosa. <laughs> yeah. Like a... It's totally a mimosa. Yeah. It totally is. Like, who's that that brews the Grand Mimosa? Have you ever had that? Mm -mm. It's a beer or a cider maybe, but it's mm -hmm. called the Grand Mimosa. And huh. it's basically like a, a cider. I think it's a cider, but with yeah. orange juice mixed in. So it's almost more like a, almost more like a Radler, I guess, in that sense. Yeah. But it's, um, it's pretty good. Nice. I wish I could remember who make it. But yeah. if you guys just Google Grand Mimosa cider, yeah. I think you'll find it. I will have to try that one. Mm-hmm. This is really good. Mm. I'm not even mad. Yeah, that no, that orange flavor is just fantastic. Uh, literally tastes like orange juice. And uh, just a little bit of happy adult beverage in the back end of it. Yeah. Very, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. I needed this. Oh, someone's got a dragon's milk. Nice. Ooh. I bought one of those for myself. It's down in the fridge. That's a baller beer. Oh, God, it's good. <laughs> that is a baller beer. Oh, God, beer. it's good. I realized I went to the store last week, and uh, we, we hear about uh, some people going, "Oh, it's a seven percent, so it's it's a it, it's a heavier beer." Oh, heavy! It's a heavy beer at seven percent. Now, I walked out of the store this last week with I think four bombers. I think my lightest one was nine point seven. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get away with it anymore in, nope. with craft beer. No, nope. like seven is kind of like the baseline. Right? Yeah, this one's a seven. 
Yeah, 7% and 70 IBU. <clears throat> so, good stuff. Good stuff. So, welcome to the show, everyone. How is everyone doing tonight? I think I've already said that, but I don't care. And we, I, Lord knows I'm doing great. You look great. Thank you. You look. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's the hat. It's the hat. It's only been 15 years and running. That's right. All right. Uh, what's the craziest diet you have ever gone on, Rhett? craziest diet i've ever gone on yeah. well i've tried a couple of the big fads mm -hmm. you know i did the paleo thing for a little while which actually i really took to and really enjoyed yeah because it, it's like kind of easy mm -hmm. you just i mean it's hard but it's easy once you figure out what you can have right did that for a couple times i did i tried the whole keto thing but i think it's a little not it's not blown out of proportion by any means but i mm -hmm. think people do it for the wrong reasons i think it can be yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that be, yeah Yep. Uh, I've done, uh, I, I mostly just count calories. I, I yeah. just try to be aware of what I'm taking in. Well, that's the tried and true method. Right, absolutely. And it works. And it works. As evidenced totally by works. the guy who lost weight by eating nothing but Twinkies. Right, exactly. Yeah. So count your calories. You'd be surprised where you're getting calories at. It, and yeah. by the way, look up the calorie count on your <laughs> no, craft beers. No, don't, do don't, do that. That. don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, <coughs> God, I was drinking one last week. It was a 10.5% stout. And I went, this has got to be pretty heavy, right? 650 calories yeah, go for figure. a pint. Then you drink two or three of those. Yeah, for a pint. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, with a light beer, you can get down to like 100 calories, 150 mm -hmm. calories. Like I think like a Coors Light is like 150 or something maybe. Yeah, it's 110, 120, something yeah, like that. Okay. Michelob's right around that 95. Yeah, but they also got that... Like what's the one... Who has... Is it Michelob that has the... 65 calorie beer or whatever i think it might be yeah i don't know but it's yeah. not bad i guess for what it is when you're drinking 65 calories right but anyway proof that you can lose weight while drinking nothing but beer and when yeah. i say that i mean consuming nothing but beer yeah uh a cincinnati ohio man has made headlines this week for giving up everything except beer for lent yeah and he's lost 15 pounds already yeah <laughs> Well, it kind of makes sense because you're not going to be getting a lot of like the nutrition. Um, they do make beers that are a lot more nutritional. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is something. That well, you got your Kentucky bro breakfast out. You got your Canadian breakfast out. There you go. You got your sausage and eggs all uh, all rolled into one. The brewmaster, the, the brewmaster <laughs> for Rogue Brewing here in Oregon, mm -hmm. was on a podcast that's pretty popular called Ologies, and she has experts in their field, doctors in their field, or whatever ologists mm -hmm. come on to the podcast and talk about something okay. and he's uh i guess i don't know quite technically what his ologist <laughs> title would be but he's like a food science guy and he mm -hmm. like grows his own yeast and does all this stuff so he went on and talked about the beer fast yeah and it was really interesting hearing his take on why it could work he goes into the nitty-gritty science of it if you guys are interested in for it but uh this isn't the first time i've heard about somebody doing this right um i actually heard about a portland man doing this like maybe 10 years ago, hmm. something like that. And he, it was the same thing for Lent. He mm -hmm. decided to do it old school, mm -hmm. went on what he called a beer fast, and ate no solid foods. <coughs> right. Um, I don't ever know what happened to him, because a lot of people say, like, you need to have solid foods in your diet. Um, it's, like, bad for your heart and stuff. So, obviously, like, before you guys do your own beer fast, make yeah, sure you... We, we are not giving medical yeah. or nutritional advice on this show. We're but simply... I, Showing you that maybe it's possible to lose weight while drinking nothing but beer. But see, this dude's like <laughs> totally in on it for the reasons that I really enjoy, which is like, he's like, well, monks used to do stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, good for you, bro. That is totally in your ballpark. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you start bringing monks into it, I'm like, okay. I am right. there. <laughs> and it's not just because of my D&D &D characters. But... Hey, Rhett, buckle up. Buckle up, guys. <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> I saw a sign the other day that said buckle up, and I almost put it on the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Uh, uh, let's see. Beer in emergency. <laughs> Someone oh, is drinking. Somebody's got a cold. They're like, I yeah. just can't give it up. Got to get right. my vitamin C. Uh, do you think you could do a beer fast for 40 days? Uh, I could probably do it. I know. I could probably do like nothing but beer, f like maybe for a few days. Mm-hmm. But once you start getting to that 40-day stretch, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. I, I will say past a week, I might be might be a little hard-pressed. I, I, I think I could certainly do a week. 
You got to remember too. One of the reasons that they did this back in the day was because beer was safer than water in many right. instances. Totally, you know, because it had to be boiled. Yeah, had to be boiled. Had to, be, you know, you got the alcohol content to kind of yeah. ward off most uh, growth. Most growth, exactly. Um, no, I've I've done fasting before. I've done uh, not necessarily for for religious purposes, but I've done it for medical purposes. Oh um, yeah, that's right. I remember you telling me about that, right? When you had the heart monitor? Uh, I've done one for a heart monitor uh, where I, I had to fast for a week and then I did another, um, I, I developed uh, pep- peptic ulcers. That, okay, and, that uh, and so that, that, was, uh, that was 30 days that I couldn't have solid food. So that was, uh, that was a little interesting, we'll, we'll say. Dang, man. Well, yep. good for you. Yep. So I, I think I could do it. Uh, are you going to do it on the channel for science? Well, that'd be an interesting set of videos, wouldn't it? <laughs> the The problem is where I work, they don't really contone day drinking. And so... Oh, yeah. You're going to be lagging for lunch. Yeah. So it'd be a breakfast and dinner kind of thing. <laughs> Just pounding them before yeah. and after. Well, KBS for dinner and uh, maybe a, a hearty stout for... Uh, maybe maybe go, the, go the flip route. Go the boiled Yeah, beer. I was going to say the flip would yeah. be good. You know, though, I think, like, by Oregon law, like, you're allowed to have, like, one or two alcoholic beverages with lunch. So, I'm sure if you keep it I would have to look that up. I would have to look that up. Yeah. Yeah. Again, (laughs) don't take my word on anything, viewers. (laughs) Please. (laughs) I'm not a a lawyer or a doctor. (laughs) Or nutritionist. Yeah. (laughs) None of the above. We have no credentials beyond what you see in front of you. Yeah, I'm pretty good at drinking beer. (laughs) Pretty good at drinking beer. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. All right. This one is uh, one of my favorites. This one's funny. Uh, so another example of Coor, or not Coors, uh, of Budweiser and Bud Light being at the top of their marketing game. Uh, Bud Light has introduced a new smart tap handle that they're going to be installing in select bars. Uh, what this is, is it's just a standard tap handle, but it's a uh, it's an acrylic handle that has a blue light inside of it. Uh, most of the time, the light's going to be off, though. However, if Bud Light mentions anything to do with Coors Light on social media, so that's on their Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter etc., uh, that will turn on blue for one hour, and for that one hour, you will get free Bud Light. <laughs> I wonder if Bud Light is just going to be like, all right, stop it now. Stop, no more mention yeah. of Coors yeah. at all. Uh, so That's like a shot across the bow. Oh, it totally is. I love that. I, I, I love the, the imagery that if... Bud Light starts throwing shade, a light turns on, and you get free beer. Yeah. I wonder where these are going to be at. Is that included in the story? Mm. I didn't get there. Like, are we talking... Oh, okay, here we go. Smart Tap will launch in five cities, March 21st. Uh, New York, Philly, Dallas, Omaha, and Vegas to coincide with the NCAA tournament. Oh, that's actually quite smart. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So that's like next week. So any of you guys are around... Make sure you uh, keep an eye out for those smart That's right. tabs. That's pretty cool. Coors Light workers will monitor Bud Light's activity in real time, and whenever an attack happens, the tap handle will light up. What a great idea. Yep. What a great idea. Yep. Oh, no, sorry. This is Coors Light smart tap. This is opposite direction. No, no, you said it. Nope. When Bud Light... Coors Light smart tap. So if Bud Light says anything about Coors Light... That's what you said. The Coors Light tap light comes on. I thought it was a Bud Light handle. Oh, it's a Coors Light handle. Yeah, yeah, it's a Coors okay. Light handle. But you, you were saying I, it correctly that I, if Bud okay. was was trying to go after Coors, right? Then you would get free beer. In yeah. my head, I had it as you'll get free Bud Light. No, no. Okay, so I said it right. I, I'm just, yeah. I'm just a little crazy today. It's interesting. That's okay. The Coors. That's okay. <laughs> light up tap. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think this is pretty cool, and I think this is a, uh, this is what social media was meant to be used for. This is what smart technology, Mm -hmm. not that this is necessarily smart technology. Tap handle of things. Yeah. Tap handle of things. Here we go. (laughs) That's another shirt. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) We've got to get a buckle up shirt. I think we do. I think we do. I think we do. So I have been exploring like uh, thing now. different merchandising options for, uh, for the last couple of months. I'm trying to find one, uh, one source where I can sell everything that I want to sell, which is all the different ty- types of beer glasses you could ever want, uh, plus shirts and bottle openers and keychains and hats and things like that. Uh, no luck thus far. I found one one manufacturer that carried everything, but they don't do drop shipping. So, mm. but we're a, working on it. That's that's a, uh, 
the way he that. says Coors triggers me. Coors? Me? Coors? Coors? Coors. Coors? Coors? <laughs> Coors? <laughs> what has our stream turned into? I don't know. Coors. Yeah. Coors. Coors? I, I don't know. Coors. 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 Yeah. There is nothing more frustrating than reading comments about... The way you say things. About the way I say things. You know? uh, you're, you're not pronouncing this right. <laughs> it's pronounced microtic, not microtic. Or it's pronounced microtic. Yeah, I, I, get, I, get, I get corrected on how I make technical pronunciations. Okay. By the way, it's a Latvian company. It's microtic. Uh, Boom. <laughs> right. Now, now I will say some people do have a point where it's Ubuntu, not uh, Ubuntu. Yeah. Piss off. <laughs> I don't care. Everyone knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, one that I always get dinged on. So I started, well, I, I do lots of podcasting and stuff like mm. that. And so I've developed a unique way of saying a lot of words. And I'm always particular about trying to enunciate the best yes, I can. absolutely. I get made fun of a lot for the way that I say clothes. Yeah. Because I say clothes. Clothes. Instead of, instead of clothes. Instead of clothes. Yeah. Which is not what the word is. Right. That's a different word. Yeah. I say clothes. No, I, I've always tried to have a very exact pronunciation yeah. of things. Um, even there, there, and there. Those are three completely different words, and they're said three different yes. ways. Yes, yes. There, there, yep. and there. Yeah. That there, You say them differently, and it separates them in your brain. So you use the exact right one and the exact yeah, right Yeah, and content. then there's no chance that you misspell it in an email and look like a right. jack wagon. Right. So... Yeah. I guess there's just some people out there that actually care, Jeff. Yep. Like us. We care. That's right. You're putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. That's one of my favorite uh, favorite things of all yeah, time. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> my wife used to be a phlebotomist, and I used to always... And people would be like, what does your wife do? And I'm like, she's a phlebotomist. Phlebotomist. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm really into philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a philosopher. <laughs> I'm a biologist. Biologist. That's a good one. <laughs> well, it's like, see, I always say like uh, theologian, mm -hmm. but people think the correct way is like theologian. Yeah. But it's theology, not yeah. theology. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Words are weird. Yep. Uh, my company could probably set you up with laser engraved drinkware and shirts. What's an email I should send info to? Uh, craftcomputing at gmail.com. That You're is from my... Tarth? That is awesome. You're from Tarth with Brienne, huh? Uh, yeah, craftcomputing at gmail.com. Absolutely emailed me. I'd be more than happy to talk. Yeah, man, that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, and you do drop shipping. Good. Nice. That, that is next excellent. Malice. You know what, Malice? Here's to you. Here's to you. We'll talk to you in email. That's right. Start drawing up this shirt, by the way, with, just with my logo on it. <laughs> logo is on the uh, screen there. That's right. Right here. Yep. And, and in my defense, I have said, let's get fancy on this show before. I don't think I've actually said, let's get crafty, but let's get fancy. You can see the leap to let's get crafty. So, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yep. So yeah, absolutely email me. We'll talk. I'd be uh, more than happy. Is it root or root? Clearly, it's root. It's root. <laughs> it's root. 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 Just like it's Coors. Coors. How do you want me to say it? Coors? Yeah, did he ever say, is there another way of saying it? I, I don't know. I don't know, whatever. Uh, my sequel? Yeah, it's sequel. Yeah. Sequel? Nerds and superiority complex on the same phrase as redundancy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's get into some tech news. <laughs> yeah, finally, here we go. Uh, so, I think this was yesterday. Uh, there's some price leaks and some release date leaks for the upcoming GTX 1660 graphics card. Not the 1660 Ti, which was launched about, what was it, two or three weeks ago? Two weeks ago, yeah. Um, but the 1660, which is going to be a cut-down version of the 1660 Ti. In the weirdest naming scheme ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we are looking at release pricing of $219.00. And they will be available tomorrow. Nice. March 14th. So, uh, Corez Light? No, that's not what I said. No. Gosh. See, you say Corez, but I'm pretty sure that just means cores. Yeah. As in core. Yeah. 
As in Marine Corps. <laughs> yeah. It is not pronounced Coors Light. I'm not saying Coors Light. That's complete Coors Light. Coors. Coors Light. Coors Light. Look, I personally knew Coo. the man. His Coo. name was Adolf Coors. <laughs> His name was Adolf. Yeah. Why are you laughing about that? It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> So yeah, sixteen sixty coming out, uh, two hundred nineteen dollar MSRP, uh, and should be available as soon as tomorrow. Now the rumors say it's going to be based off a TU uh, TU one sixteen GPU with only fourteen hundred and eight CUDA cores, whereas the sixteen sixty Ti has the same GPU core but with fifteen hundred thirty six. So about a ten percent price or performance discrepancy between the two. Yeah. Uh, uh, it will also feature six gigabytes of GDDR six and use a single 8-pin power connector. So very similar to, say, like an off-the-shelf 1070. Something about that level of performance. Yeah. Uh, maybe a hair under that, but something around a GTX 1070, I think, is what we can all expect. 1660s said it would feature a 1530 megahertz base clock with a 1785 boost. However, overclock models like the MSI Gaming X may boost up to 1860, but again, GPU boost obviously goes way higher than that. Typically, we see 1900 plus, so... But as of tomorrow, you may be able to purchase a GTX 1660. You recall the price point we're looking at? 219. 219. Oh, it's right there. Yep. Yeah. I think it's the third time I've said it. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, he definitely hasn't said the price point. I'm going right. to have to ask about this. Be a hero. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I just searched Amazon. 1660 Ti is still the only result. So, yeah. Excellent. Who pronounces wash as warsh? Uh, weird, weird people. Yep. Uh, it, I think it's a Midwest thing. My uh, my stepdad, he always said Warsh. And he also always called things like, it wasn't like paper towels. It was always scotch towels. Scotch, yeah. Which is like, because I think it's like a brand thing. Right. Uh, what's really weird is uh, I grew up in Eugene, Oregon. And uh, down there we called it pop. Yeah. Everywhere around me called it soda. What? So so oh. I, I drive to Portland or Seattle and it was soda. I drive oh. to California and it was soda. No, in Oregon it's pop. And, and, and now it's soda. Now that I've... Grana, it's soda. No, it's pop. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's soda. I don't know. I'm going to die. It's pronounced this. pop. Yeah, it, it, it is. <laughs> I grew up, it was called pop. And yeah. my, my brother married a girl from Southern California. And mm -hmm. she was always like, what? You want a what? I was like, yeah. hey, what kind of pop do you want? She's like, uh, I don't know mm -hmm. what that is. She was like legitimately confused. But it's just like all these a-holes who call it the five. Right. I'm like, it's, it's I-5. It's I-5. Yeah, it's I-5. Yep. Anyway, yeah, regional dialects are always really interesting. I, I, I always enjoy this. In fact, uh, we did this whole bit when we were uh, hanging out with uh, the dudes from uh, uh, Gigabyte and... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alpha Cool. Alpha Cool. Yeah. Uh, when we were at CES. Good old day. And we literally sat there all night drinking beers being like, what do you call this? <laughs> and we got into a big argument about a jumper versus a sweater versus <laughs> like whatever, a, a pullover. I don't know what It I was, was three to four, by the way. For, for jumper versus sweater, was for it? what you were wearing, because you had on a sweater. Was I arguing? You no, you uh, you were saying this is a sweater, right? And and Dave was saying no, it's a jumper, and and then uh, yeah, Andrew, Andrew and had to jump Andrew, in and said no, it's a sweater. Yeah, he was like, it's a freaking sweater. A freaking, <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, uh, that's like one of my favorite things is just regional dialects. But of course, Oregon has their own. The United States has their own. Of course, yeah. in the South, they're famous for calling pop Coke. Coke. I, I was actually going to bring that one up. It's uh, because he, here we argue soda versus pop. Yeah. Down there, it's I'd like a Coke. Oh, what kind? Well, what do you have? Well, we have oh. Sprite, Dr. Pepper, Coke. Yeah. yeah. You Not already said weird. Coke. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, man. Yeah. It's super weird. You know, you got crawdad versus crawfish. Mm -hmm. You got... Uh, versus what? river lobster. Versus... <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a bunch of ones, but I can't yeah. remember them off the top of my head all of a sudden. Anyway, that's not that important, I guess. Well, is it crawfish or crawdad to you? Um, well, here I guess we call them crawdad, but crawdad. but also like I had a bunch of redneck friends growing up that always called them crawfish. Yeah. So it's like that wasn't like super uncommon for me to hear call both them ways. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because we used to go into the creek in Silverton when I was growing up, and you just grab a big old bucket of those bad boys, take them <laughs> home, and boil them. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> it's so good. All right. What else do we got? Uh, we've got some AMD news. Uh, AMD is also launching a new graphics card uh, as soon as tomorrow. 
However, you probably won't be able to buy this one. <coughs> and well, it, uh, given that you're not one of the one billion people that lives in China. Right. There's a one in seven chance you can buy this graphics card. <laughs> uh, but probably not for any of my viewers. Yeah. Uh, soft drinks. Yeah, no one calls it soft drinks. Soft drinks? Yeah. I, I know soft drink is just non-alcoholic drink. But yeah, I also th that, uh, that's a term only used in grocery. Oh, is that why they call it soft drink? Yeah, you have hard drinks and soft drinks. Hard drinks are alcoholic. I thought soft drink was just like anything with carbonation. Nope. Well, typically yes, but technically a juice is a soft drink. Actually, technically a juice is a mixer. That makes well, sense. <laughs> hard, hard liquor, hard soft. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> We're opening doors for rent this <laughs> Here evening. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, but also, like, I like how this guy is probably some, like, corporate marketing, like, stooge, and he's just like, I say, who's all for soft drinks? That's right. Just kidding. You're probably not that person. But I like to imagine that some, like, corporate yes man is the only person who calls him soft drinks. Yeah. <laughs> he turns off the, That's right. the stream right now. He's like, I'm never watching again. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. I work in some artsy fartsy field. That's right. I don't believe in corporate yes men. I wear shorts and flip flops. That's another thing. Flip flops. You know what they call them in Hawaii? Sandals. Slippers. Slip rip. Yeah. In Hawaii, they're called slippers. Huh. Did not know that. Yeah. Now I call them slippers just to piss everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> Look at my slippers. It's the middle of summer, man. What the hell do you need? Yeah. Exactly, right? Yep. yep. That's a good one. Totally. Uh, everyone else calls it an umbrella. Here we go. What the hell's an umbrella? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I didn't, <laughs> going abroad, I always tell people, like, I never need umbrellas, but, um, yeah, I've made a disgrace of myself as an Oregonian, because abroad, I've used umbrellas, oh. especially in Japan, <laughs> but the nice thing about Japan is, like, they have them everywhere, Yeah, like, they have ones you can borrow and just, like, leave at other stores, Right. they have, like, little umbrella holders at each store opening, so you mm -hmm. can put it in, and you go to the next one. They have like a whole infrastructure based around this. It's amazing. Nice. And it rains all the time. Yeah. Well, it rains all the time here, nine months out of the year. Yeah. But we don't use umbrellas here. Yeah, there's something about a rain though. It like doesn't soak into your clothes nearly as much. Like you can go out and you can be out in the rain for 30 minutes and be less wet than some other places. That's true. Uh, here, everyone goes, oh, it rains all the time, which this is not like a Missouri rain. This is not like the yeah. you're getting an inch of rain in an hour, which sometimes it does that. I'm yeah, not going to lie. Yeah, it does, yeah. But most of the time, we'll get like three quarters of an inch per day during the winter. Yeah. Uh, but it happens all during the day. And so during an hour, yeah, I'll get, you know, maybe a tenth of an inch at the very most. Yeah. Which is not that heavy of a rainfall. So... Anyway, yeah, we were, what are we, we doing? were moving on to graphics cards. <laughs> That's why I like it when you're on the show during a slow week, is we can really stretch things out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can talk about anything. Sorry, guys. So AMD has a new graphics card coming out, but like I said, one in seven people will not be able to buy it. Yep. Uh, this is, again, another example for AMD launching yet another graphics card and confusing the market even further as far as naming schemes go. Yeah. Uh, the same kind of thing I've given NVIDIA crap for with the, the 1063 gig versus versus 6 gig and the 1050, 1050 Ti, 1053 gig. And then you've got your 1065 gig and you've got your 1070 and 1070 Ti and you've got your 1030 and your 1030 DDR4. All different graphics cards. AMD is no better. Um, so in this case, they are launching the AMD Radeon RX 560 XT. Now, some of you might remember, a couple of months ago, they launched a Chinese-only variant of the RX 580 2048SP, uh, which was the cut-down version of the RX 580, which made it oh, a 570. <laughs> like, spec for spec, it was a 570, but they called it a 580 2048SP. Um, now, we're getting the RX 560, which is a cut-down version of the RX 570, uh, from 32 uh, compute units down to 28 compute units, but it's still a far cry in front of the RX 560's 14 or 16 compute units, depending on which version you got. And by the way, there's no distinction in the RX 560 on which one is which. Thanks, where's, AMD. Where, where's the rant counter? Hold on. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here it goes. I forgot about the rant counter. Wait a minute. What did you put on back? Uh, it shows the weather every half hour. Oh, all right. So Fair enough. Yeah. 
or any time there's a weather change. So. It updates. I yep, gotcha. it updates. I gotcha. Uh, so again, there's a 14 and a 16 compute unit, uh, 896 versus 1024 stream processor version of the RX 560. Now we're getting a 28 compute unit uh, with double the texture units, uh, double the ROPs, uh, lower base and boost clock, <laughs> incidentally, uh, from 1175 down to 973 based on the RX 560. Uh, higher memory bus, 256-bit versus 128, and we're getting 4 or 8 gigabytes instead of just the 2 or 4 that came on the RX 560. So we are getting a stripped-down RX 570 with a new name. That's that release in a nutshell. Uh, again, it's, it's so frustrating when companies come out with cards that are literally carbon copies of another card or split in between and they don't differentiate which is which. Now, I will say the RX 560 XT does have the XT after it and it has a lot more in common with the RX 570 than it does with the RX 560. But why do I need 15 different SKUs for four different graphics cards? Well, if it makes you feel any better, this one's China only. It is China only. So. And so was the 2048 SP because I don't think that crap would have flown in the US. Or, or globally. And that's the question I'm always I'm left with with releases like this. Is like, what what is the advantage of a China-only release? Like, granted, I know that this is a huge market. Like, China is its mm. own market. Oh, totally. To, in and of itself. Um, but, like, what is, what's the advantage? It, it just... Uh, I mean, you, you can talk while I'm typing. It's okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you started typing. I was like, I have to know what he's writing about. <laughs> Um, no, but that's all I have to say. It's like, what, what, what do they gain from doing a China only launch of something like this mm -hmm. that isn't even, you know, that sort of segment? That is from so other... close to an RX 570. Yeah. Like, are, are your yields not good enough that you're cutting out four compute units? Are your yields good enough from the 14 core that you've been, or the 14 compute unit that you've been selling 32 good cores and you're now cutting those down to 28 just right. so you can sell those? What is the marketing strategy here? But just look at this chart. This chart only includes the 560, the 570, and the 580. And yeah. not even the full 580, just the 580 2048SP, which again, stupidest name in the history of marketing. <laughs> um, outside of USB 3.2 Gen, Gen 3x3. That's a real name. Um, so we have the RX 560 in both a 2 gig and a 4 gig variant as well as the 1024 variant. Uh, so we've, sorry, we've got the RX 560 14CU in a four and a two gig. We have the 16CU in a two and a four gig. Uh, we've got the RX 560 in a four and an eight gig. Uh, we've, or that's the XT. We've got the 570 in a four and an eight gig. We've got the ROP <laughs> or the, the uh, 2048 SP in a four or an eight gig. Plus, we've got the actual 580 in a 4 or an 8 gig. So that's another two SKUs on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's 12 SKUs for four graphics cards. Yeah. What the crap? And they all have minor differences. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. I mean, does, like, market confusion lend itself to more sales? It can. I know it can. Um where you just force the consumer into going, well, this one's only $5 more than this one, and this one's only $10 more than this one, and, and whatnot. And so you kind of start gaming yourself, well, I was going to spend 150 but for $20 more, I can spend 170 and I can get this card, which is obviously better because it's $20 more. Oh, and they have this one for 180 Ooh, if I'm going to spend 180 I might as well spend 220 and get that one. And so I mean, it can escalate get, your I, purchase up, and I all of a sudden you spend... Of, yeah. And all of a sudden you've spent an extra $70. But... Even then, why not just sell the card that... Uh, and maybe that's the wrong mindset. Maybe this is where I'm wrong. But does it really pay that much to have something at every sort of like microcosmic level? <sighs> or can you just have one skew? Maybe two skews, right? Where maybe you have one card that's at this price, one that's $20 less. See, see now we're like, getting into marketing and philosophy. <laughs> and uh, I could say from a consumer standpoint... If I've got two hundred dollars to spend on a graphics card and my two options are at one fifty and two thirty, yeah, that's frustrating. 
Yeah, I can see that. I want to get two hundred dollars worth of value. I can't afford the two hundred thirty dollar card. I I'm gonna throw away fifty dollars. Is that what I'm gonna do? Well, it's not necessarily throwing away. Or I'm not gonna get everything out of my two hundred dollars that I want because it doesn't exist. Yeah, that would certainly be a frustrating. That's position. the thing that's gonna be irritating. Right, is that you're not gonna get what you want. I don't know. So I, I don't know. You're talking me into this all of a sudden. Well, it's just an interesting. I don't understand it. Like. I don't understand what like the marketing behind it. I don't. Mm-hmm. To me, look, I'm not like a marketing guru by any means, but we are not experts on this show. But <laughs> but it just begs the question. Mm-hmm. And you know, I have a, the problem that I have in life, and maybe this is the wrong way to go about it, is that I I just regard myself as the average on every level. Oh, which totally. Is probably incorrect, but but to me, I'm wondering if I'm going to buy something. First of all, I'm the type of buyer I get overwhelmed pretty easily. And I right. love shopping around. Mm-hmm. I love comparing specs. I love doing all that sort of stuff. But like you got twelve SKUs thrown at me for some like similar products. Right. With the same name. I yeah. could understand if they were completely different names and easy to identify yeah. which is which on the shelf. Oh, yeah. we've got a five sixty, we've got a five sixty five, we've got a five seventy, yeah. we've got a five seventy TI. We've got this, we've got that. Yeah. I can see if they were clearly identifiable and differentiatable where you could yeah. Start making some distinctions. My my point is they are so convoluted and so overlapping. Yeah. Uh, what what's better to get a five sixty XT four gig or a or eight gig or an RX five seventy four gig? Yeah. And I then, can't tell you. <coughs> I honestly can't tell you. Yeah, it's tough, man. And then I don't. And then and then of course I don't understand quite the whole focus on doing a limited regional release Mm -hmm. i mean i guess it makes sense again china is a market into itself Mm -hmm. you don't have to justify releasing something only in china but but it does beg the question you know i don't know we can probably debate this for a long time but yeah it i mean god what did i say on my 1053 gig review that there were 17 pascal based cards (laughs) 17 pascal based cues for 1030, 1050, 1060, 1070, 1080. Five, five, there were 17 cards for five SKUs. And I just don't see what that gets. Or anybody. rather 17 SKUs for five numbers. I don't see what that be. gets anybody. Like, is, yeah. there, is there a buyer out there where SKU number 13 is going to be exactly what they want mm. over... I mean, I guess there is. There has to be, right? Otherwise, what are they doing? Exactly what you want or the right amount of compromise in each area. Because those, those are two very... Yeah. Different things. And compromise in each area is where I'm usually at as a consumer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve earlier was asking about uh, how bad my hat smells. And I have to Ooh. say, I take care of my hat. He, do, he does. He takes way better care of his hat than I do. Yeah. The thing is... I, I, I don't care about Rhett's hat. You, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I've never seen Jeff wash my hat. Uh, which, frankly, don't know why he hasn't. I mean... Um, my bad. My bad. You have the same hat for 15 years, and you tend to start taking care of it. Especially, I started wearing the hat as a joke, mm-hmm. um, and then about a year in, I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have this thing for a while. I guess I should start washing it." So I wash it fairly regularly in the sink, hot water, dish soap with a toothbrush. Yep. So. Yep. Um, the little nubbin on top has fallen off several times. Nothing a little super glue can't fix. That's right. So here we are. That's right. This hat has been to uh, like 12 countries, 13 countries, something like that. Nice. Yeah, not it's too It's been bad. to Vegas once. It has. Actually, it's been to Vegas uh, twice. Twice? Oh. Yeah. Um, you told me I was really one. Yeah, I did, but you fell for it. So. <laughs> yeah, the only, the only day I didn't wear this hat was the day I got married. And let me tell you. Even my wife was pretty close to being like, all right, you can wear the hat. You can wear the hat. Yeah. <laughs> you just look weird without it. Right? Yeah. She was like, I don't know who you are. Rhett invests in Febreze. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Why not? Although I really don't use that on my hat. I just... Look, you wash your hair. Yep. And then maybe like every two weeks to a month, you wash the hat in the sink. I, I will say my hat hygiene, not up to snuff. Well, it's, it's but that, when you have lots of different hats... I have a lot of hats. Right. When you have lots of different I, hats... I'm a, I'm a hat guy. I, you, I own about a dozen different hats that I wear on rotation. And most people will tell you, washing your hair is enough to keep your hat clean. Yes. The only time you start Unless you in, sweat like I do. Because right. I... I yeah. Dude, I sweat. I, 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 I do like Kevin James sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, 
Boy, what are you doing? <laughs> Jump rope in the attic? By the way, that's on Netflix now. Nice. Yeah, it's back I on Netflix. Peel an Orange now. about an hour ago. Why? It's my favorite. I love that one. So good. <laughs> Um, sweat the small stuff, Kevin James. You guys haven't seen it. It's one of the best, oh, best yeah. hour-long comedy specials you'll watch. It's spot on. Kevin James is the man. How do you give a phone number? Ba 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 ba. That's right. If you got an area code, there's an extra ba 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 at the beginning. That's where me and Jeff start getting into debates about this because right. I, I've updated the bit to include an area code. That's right. <laughs> Not Jeff though. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm OG. Yeah, yeah. I'm OG. Straight yeah. thugging it. Yeah. Um, well, I was alive when he did that routine, so. You know. Well, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was dead at the time. Yeah, you, yeah. I was dead. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, take care of your hats. It's pretty easy. Dawn Dish Soap is one of the best utilitarian soaps out there, the blue stuff. And AMD coming out with a new RX 560 X2 graphics card. There you go. There we go. Only in China. I... Again, I have no idea how we got there. Uh, Steve asked me about my hat. <laughs> Steve asked about your hat. I don't know why. Uh. You know, for those those of you guys interested, me and Steve have shared a bed. Yeah. Ask him about that. For four time. days. Yeah, we yeah. did. That's right. That's right. It's quite romantic. Yeah. If you're wondering what's going on with the hair, uh, I today was one of the first days I could drive my car with the top down on the way home. Is that why you look a little windswept? That's why I'm a little windswept today. It yeah. looks really good though. Like yeah. honestly, when I came in and then you were talking about the shirt, I was gonna be like, also your hair looks badass. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're having thank a you. good day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wearing the right things. Drop the top at the right time. Yeah, I was having a bad hair day. So Off we go. I, I've been like, I haven't worn the hat on the show for a long time. Yeah. I'm gonna wear the hat. So, uh, but you, meanwhile, just keeping it together. But then I didn't say anything either because you always make fun of me for being so like, yeah, conscientious of looks, even though I'm not. <laughs> Rhett's literally in the camera before the show going. But I'm not. It's just because we're a live show. I don't want to look like a jackass. <laughs> it's come up like every time too. Yeah. We went out to that comedy show and <laughs> I changed my shirt once and you're like, what are you going to do? Five more times? I'm like, all right. Yeah. I changed my shirt once. What do you want from me? It was me? twice. It was once. It was twice. It was maybe twice. It was twice. I'm pretty sure it was. It was at least twice. I don't know about Twice that. is when I said, okay, that's enough. We, we need to get going. Our Uber's here. <laughs> all the, right. You're the worst. You're the worst. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm the worst kind of friend because I'll never let you forget. <laughs> your, even your slightest mistake, like having strawberries in your, in your ale. John. Uh, <laughs> what's wrong with that though oh long story i'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you after <laughs> all right all everyone right. else has heard the story okay yeah fair enough fair uh enough. so nvidia in other news is uh making some waves now this came yeah. in very very fast very very sudden uh microsoft and intel were both in talks to buy the networking company melanox now if you haven't heard of that company i don't necessarily blame you they mostly work in server grade stuff, uh, network connectivity, ethernet, and InfiniBand. Um, so low latency, high bandwidth, uh, interconnect between servers and switches. Uh, what, uh, in fact, the my 10 gig networking video with the, the Mikrotik switch, those are Mellanox uh, ethernet cards, Mellanox 10 gig cards. So that, that's what they do, is high, high bandwidth uh, cards and switches. Um, Intel and Microsoft really, really wanted this company, although I don't know if it really would have fit either of them because Intel already does InfiniBand and their own kind of weird high-speed thing that uses its own protocols and, and they're trying to leverage like CPU integration and instruction <laughs> sets with networking to kind of short track networking bandwidth and whatnot, which we all see how well that's worked with uh, yeah. hyper-threading, thus you have Spectre and Meltdown. Uh, so I'm not sure I want Intel integrating any more secret closed door technologies into my server. Uh, I would rather everything be open source and open standards and yeah, I don't know, auditable. World. Yeah. Sorry, the, the server guy in me is peeking through. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so, and then Microsoft, it's like, what in the world? Do you, you're not a hardware company. Why are you getting involved in, in yeah. this? Uh, NVIDIA comes out of nowhere because Mellanox has been kind of loosely on the market for about three to four months now. 
And uh, Intel had placed a bid for the company valued at between somewhere around 5.5 to $6 billion in cash. Uh, and they thought they were going to buy it. Yeah. They, they were. They had a pretty substantial offer. They, they were getting ready. They, they go, we have an aggressive offer. It's all said and done. And then on Sunday, it's announced that NVIDIA has, player three has entered the game, so to speak. And on Monday, the sale went through for $6.9 billion. So NVIDIA added an additional $900 million An aggressive To that offer. bid. A very aggressive counteroffer. Intel backed off and Mellanox is now sold. Um, there were also a lot of questions on whether or not Intel would clear regulatory approval uh, for the purchase because they are already heavily invested into a competing technology. Uh, again, with their own kind of closed door standards yeah. for high bandwidth networking. Uh, but NVIDIA is not. Now, NVIDIA is highly invested in data centers as far as uh, uh, high-end computing and machine learning and AI and things like that. But so far, they're not invested in the networking portion of that. And so they rely on Intel and, and InfiniBand and other technologies to link their data centers together. What this may do for NVIDIA is give them an even stronger foothold into data centers and allow them to start producing their own servers and boxes 100% yeah. in-house. Uh, now, Mellanox is a member of ARM, of the ARM uh, project, and they are a contributor to ARM. And so there's a lot of thought that NVIDIA may eventually come out with an ARM-based CPU with a Tesla or Quadro-based GPU machine learning solution with InfiniBand or Mellanox uh, 100 or multi-100 gig Ethernet built on board yeah. that they could sell 100% first party. That's a pretty tempting proposition, it, number one, if you're NVIDIA, and number two, if you're an investor into these types of data centers. Do you have any thoughts? Because I needed to breathe. <laughs> 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 oh, and I've been talking for a while. Hold on, my throat's getting dry. No, no, you're all right. <laughs> But uh, no, I don't know if I have any thoughts other than that. I think this is just a really good move for NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. If you are a company that is into that, you're looking for your next your next stepping stone. This is it. This is going to allow you to make those big manufacturing moves and start creating these. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily consumer level, uh, you know, business level um, technologies, all in house, hundred percent right out the door right and that's where your big profits are at mm -hmm. you know if they've got to go to melanox in order to get this stuff first you're dipping into profits pretty big time yep uh you know because melanox is a company and they have to um they also have to make their own profits uh this just seems like sort of the natural evolution of this sort of thing um and the fact that intel is after it shows you that nvidia is making, I think, the right, <laughs> the yeah. right moves, you yeah. know? Um, well, it, and it was kind of unclear, number one, what Microsoft was going to use it for, but what in, Intel was going to use it for. Yeah. Because, like I said, they already have competing technologies. And getting past regulatory approval to make the purchase yeah, to basically monopolize one segment of the high bandwidth market, uh, that was going to be, that was going to need some convincing and some massaging through the, the powers that be. And they might not have passed. That's the thing. Well, I hear as long as you bribe the right person, anything's possible, like getting your kid into USC. Oh, yeah. That's true. As even, if, if, even if they don't want to be there. As if you weren't privileged enough, a little bit of extra money goes mm -hmm. a long ways. <laughs> there was a great quote on, on that, that story. Um, I think I read it on Reddit, uh, where we already know there are legal loopholes on for ways rich people can take advantage of the system yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and and get privileges that are privy to the rest of us. Go ahead and buy buy the the USC Jeffrey Library of Computer Science. Right, exactly. And and, and so donate a building or donate to a trust fund or do this or do that and, and Which is how colleges run, which is unfortunate. Right. But, but you know, all of a sudden there's a hundred thousand dollar donation and a new plaque or sign in my name and hey yeah. my kid just happens to be a freshman there. Go figure. Oh wow. uh but uh, but it went, you felt like you were so privileged that you still had to cheat that. That's what's mind-blowing <laughs> me. 
And how many? There's like 750 families involved or something like this. And it's like oh, over 800 families. And the best uh, part is, is like that the studies or that the, the that the numbers that they're releasing at this moment have mm-hmm. indicated that those families' kids wouldn't have necessarily been any more well off than if they had just gone to like a state school that they could right. get into. Right. And which is so funny. Like, what does that mean? Your kid's stupid. Is yeah. that what that means? Yeah. Like, maybe your kid's not stupid, but, like... Well, no, what, what I find offensive is uh, is supposedly Lori Laughlin uh, paid over $500,000 for her two kids to get into USC. There was another family that only paid $15,000. So, Lori, you got freaking fleeced. Oh, this is what happens when you have more money than you have brains. Right. And I find it offensive that you have that much money. Right. And not that much brains. Right. And here I am, scraping at the bottom of the barrel. hmm You know... <laughs> I just freaking, I can't go on living in this world anymore. I just can't do it. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Like, you already have, like, all of the social advantages that being rich offers you. Yeah. And then somehow you screw up even being rich. Right. (laughs) Well, and and again, it's not just that they bought their way into college. That happens all the time. And there's ways to do that. There are ways that we don't. (laughs) There there are ways that we don't consider fraud. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, you, you make a sizable donation to the university, you buy them a new lab, you you name a library, you buy naming rights to a stadium, you do this, you do that. Yeah. And your kid happens to get through with, with a 4.0 and is a valedictorian and gets their degree and yeah. And and you couldn't even do that? Like you had to circumvent that system? Really? Yeah. I mean, how much does a new library cost, Lori? <laughs> Hashtag rant time. <laughs> I thought Rhett might be ramping up for a rant there. Yeah, exactly. I was getting close. He was getting close. You want he, me to rant about rich people? I can do that. He caught himself. <laughs> I'd prefer you didn't. Yeah, rich people, call us. We, we still need investors for this channel. Yeah, you, you guys are. want a rich person library at Craft Computing Studios? That's right. <laughs> give us a call. That's right. Hell, we'll hang your name right over here. I'll give you naming rights uh, to my bench. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, Let's run some benchmarks. We're going to turn around to the Lori G. Laughlin test bench. <laughs> right, you'll notice that the Lori G. Laughlin uh, test bench uh, here is made out of solid oak. That's the best right. money can buy. Anyway, back oh, to the specs here. This is here. birch. Oh, oh, birch. I'm birch. so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Freshly she, oiled, of course. She paid a lot of money for this. You better get the wood right. <laughs> this is food grade mineral oil coating this birch. No, this is completely untreated, which is why it's stained. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, no, they, they know it's stained. They can't see it. They, really, yeah, so. they, they've seen it in videos, though. You know, though, Lori, if you want, you can keep us just up to here in beer for the mm-hmm. rest of the, sh- the live streams. Um, That's right. Honestly, your kid could come here and learn a thing or well, two. I don't think she's going to have access to her bank accounts for another year or so. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Hey, here's an idea. Don't be rich and stupid. Mm-hmm. Just be stupid. No, just never mind. Yep. <laughs> I hate you. Yep. <laughs> and another news: Nvidia bought a company for six point nine billion dollars. A lot of money. A lot of. A lot that's of a money. lot of walking around cash. Now, by the way, they're paying cash for this. However, they are dipping into their bank account. Nvidia only has about seven point five billion dollars in cash. Only. Or only. Well, they're spending six point nine of it. That's you being down to $75 and spending $69 on... Uh, yeah, but also it's not. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like also... But that $69 is going to earn you $25 over the next year. Exactly. Exactly. Sure, they only have half a billion dollars of liquid cash left. Half a trillion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Two, yeah, no, it's three quarters of a trillion. Wait, what? No, sorry. No, don't. your math is off. Don't My math's off. Sorry. Three quarters of 10 billion. 7.5 billion. I'm, I'm vulnerable when it comes to math, yeah. Jeff, so don't yeah. trick me here. Uh, but So they have 7.5 sorry, billion. Sorry, that was dollars. Apple that had $800 billion in capital. Yeah, they can yeah. They can drown. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and buy us a new studio. Yeah. <laughs> but so they have $7.5 billion. Mm-hmm. They spend 6.9. Yeah. So they still have half a billion, a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Um, Half a billion in change, we'll call it. Yeah, in change. In change. And then they're going to be 
making a sizable return. You don't right. spend that much money. What what they're saying is inside of three years, just on this investment, they'll be back to seven point five billion in the in the bank in cash. Yeah, and to give you guys an idea of, this is a thing about a billion that's really scary. You have a million dollars, or you have a billion dollars. You convert that to seconds. A million dollar, a million seconds is eleven days. Mm -hmm. A billion seconds is like thirty two years. Yeah, that's how much money they have. So versus eleven days, they actually have fifteen years worth of money left in terms of seconds. So we're pretty much worthless, and nothing we do matters. Uh, so Yay, do yes. what makes you happy. Yay us. Anyway, <laughs> did we just get too dark? We might have gotten too dark there. Sorry, guys. Too dark. Honestly, though, I'm not kidding. Nothing you do matters. Yep. <laughs> On to the next news story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <coughs> Just kidding. Actually. On to some brighter news. NVIDIA pulling the plug on 3D. <laughs> oh, are we skipping this one? Uh, that was just uh, yeah, that further was reading. a long one. Yep. Finally pulling the plug on 3D because who gives a hell? Shit? Yeah. A damn? Right. Words. Yeah. So NVIDIA is pulling the plug on NVIDIA 3D Vision. Now, I'm sure all of you have this driver installed on your PC if you have an NVIDIA card, and none of you have ever used it. And I say none, and I really mean none. Honestly, none of you ever ever use this. If you have, chime in in the in comments. In the comments below. And prove it. Yeah. Prove it. Seriously. Picks or GTFO? Is the bench discounted for the stain or just a mark of authenticity? Uh, no. Uh, this tabletop was brand new when I got when I when I built the studio. Um, I had used this very briefly as another desk and then kind of set it aside for a while. It's nice. Um, and it was pristine. It was perfect. Uh, then. Uh, I, I moved it up to the studio and I went, you know what? I need a third tabletop. I only bought the two countertops and I went, I need a third table. So I put the table here and I did one video on it and it was pristine. And that was my, like a bag review. It was that, yeah. uh, that carry case review. Oh yeah. And then the second video was me rebuilding my Dishonored PC, uh, which has blue coolant in it. And during that video, I overfilled the reservoir and dripped blue coolant all down the inside of that case <laughs> and, and whatnot. And it, and, and I didn't realize I was doing it and it ended up pooling right here in the center and I got, it, it's everywhere. It's Honestly, everywhere. Honestly though, thing. like what else is a workbench for? Right. Well, unfortunately this is my, my broadcast table and I wanted it to look a little bit nicer because it's the closest thing and it's in focus. If it was back here, it's fine. Yeah. But you know, at this point, honestly, like we ought to just, rip this bad boy apart yeah you just ought to like make it rainbow colored yep oh totally i mean look it's done its service it's in focus you can't tell on the stream honestly you can tell during some of my videos because the the well, camera pulls out a little bit because the camera's looking at other stuff but, yep but uh you know what it shows you're getting your hands dirty Jeff. yep anyway by the way that was a ten dollar donation from skull thank you skull yep we appreciate it that's right uh yeah so yeah there there's a bunch of blue green stains all over my desk and and anymore there's burn marks from soldering <laughs> and i think i have a dremel mark on one of the edges here somewhere i'm sure we can find it if we look yep. but it's around here somewhere where yeah. i went into it with a cutting wheel yeah yeah it, it's been around the block just getting some serious work done yep uh nvidia 3d vision so that is the active shutter 3d glasses with a compatible uh, 120 hertz monitor to give you 60 hertz 3D depth vision on a flat panel. Um, and for some reason, the technology never took off, just like it never really took off in theaters and just like it never took off in the home. Yeah, I... Even though I had a Mitsubishi Diamond Series 73-inch rear projection 3D TV. I had one, and I, I had the 3D glasses, and I had two movies. <laughs> two movies. Two movies. Which ones? Uh, Avatar and Minions, or uh, Despicable Me, the first one. Yeah, Avatar is pretty obvious. Despicable Me. <laughs> yep. Those are the two movies I had in, in real 3D. Yep, that was it. How many times did you watch them? Uh, we watched Despicable Me twice, and I think we watched Avatar twice. So that was close to two grand to watch four 3D movies. Now, it was a beautiful TV besides. It was I 120 bet. Hertz, so 1080p. Great. Oh, amazing. It was, it was... Rest assured, viewer. It was a great TV. I love... 
Uh, Shut up. <laughs> no, no, honestly. I think it's great. You're an early adopter. This is great. Yeah. It's good. Um, I, what other movies would you have watched, though? That's the real question. Did you have any... Did, was there any on your radar? You're like, I gotta get these. Probably not. Just a second. No, no. Sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> what other movies did you have your eyes on? Where you're like, when you oh, bought this thing, gosh. you're like, I've got to get this movie, this thing. Honestly, I was hoping that more would come out. Um, oh. Now, now the problem is, you never wish that. What are you that thinking? that of the three D movies that that were released in theaters and the ones that came out, there were only a couple that were actually shot in three D. All the rest of them were digital uh, enhancement. Yeah, or digital whatever. enhancement or digital Im impositions uh, of 3D on onto a 2D frame, and it just doesn't work. Your depth, no. your sense of depth isn't there. Um, it looks so artificial, and I say artificial in the constructs of an active shutter 3D glasses display. Yeah. Um, Honestly, so, the, the only movie I can think of that was worth it in 3D was Avatar. Yeah, Avatar was worth it. Despicable animated films are one thing because they can render them in 3D. Yeah. They're, they're... I did want to see the new Spider-Man in 3D, but I couldn't. They stopped showing it in 3D before I yeah. could. So um, I will say I did see uh, the Force Awakens in 3D, and that was a good experience, oh, even yeah. though that was a 2D converted to 3D. Yeah, I did see um, that too. So it, it's possible, but you also had uh, what was that? The the Zeus the um, there was one with uh, Greek gods fighting. That came out around that time, like 2009-ish. Force Awakens was not 2009. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying when oh, I owned this TV. I don't know. You had like Beowulf, then you had like the, uh, like, wait, were those movies? Like The Lightning Thief? Like Yeah, whatever. it was it was around that. Like the Rick Riordan novel? Yeah, or whatever. it was around that, that what time. What was that called? I don't remember. Percy Jackson? or something? Yeah, it wasn't the Percy Jackson ones. No, there was... Uh, Zeus Fighting. There was a, a Greek god mythology. It wasn't Hercules, but it was... Oh! Grandiose action movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah. Uh, never mind. I I can't, I'm not going to be able to think of it in time. Clash of the Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Clash of the Titans. Yep, the that remake was in, of the class. That was in 3D. Uh, here's my Super Chat V-Card. Respect it. $11. William, thank you very much. Your V-Card, dog. Thanks. I, I, I appreciate that you... You gave that to me. We'll That's try awesome. to we'll try to handle it with care. Yep. Thank you. Haha, -ha, I got Clash of the Titans before they told me in chat. There you go. I nice. Totally you did. did. I did. Uh yeah, so 3D, meh, who needs it? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, moving right along. Here we go. Uh Intel. So we've reported on Intel's difficulties with manufacturing yep. a number of times. Pretty much since the beginning of craft computing, they have failed to get to 10 nanometer. Uh, and even more recently, there's been shortages in their chips because their chipsets have caught up with their CPUs and their, their graphics chips and whatnot. And there's not enough fab space to go around on their 14 nanometer fabs. Yeah. Uh, now... Intel had reported that, no, 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 we're clearing hurdles. We're hoping to go to 10 nanometers sometime in Q2, uh, maybe Q3. Ooh, we're going to push it to 2020. Uh, but don't worry. We're totally going to solve our, our our fab problems. Yeah. Don't you worry. They're, they're coming. Don't you uh, worry. There are reports out now that, no, Intel's chip shortage is actually going to worsen in quarter two, which is probably the worst time ever in the history of Intel ever. <laughs> to not have a good quarter because AMD's coming swinging. They are swinging and they are swinging for the fences with Zen 2. Yeah. So uh, if you're an Intel fanboy, number one, don't be. Uh, <laughs> don't be a fanboy of anything. Don't, don't be brand loyal and blind because that's just... It doesn't benefit you. It doesn't benefit you and it doesn't benefit anyone. Competition benefits everyone. Uh, so... Just, just be thankful there's always, always someone on top. And don't be afraid to admit when it's not the company that you own. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and 
and and you'll be just fine. Uh, but yeah, there's if there could be a worse time for Intel to be struggling to keep up with demand, it's going to be quarter two of this year when yeah. Zen Two comes out with some potentially pretty groundbreaking products and market disruptive products out of AMD's camp. Bad timing for sure. Bad timing. Oh, I am getting a little bit thirsty again. Um, you know, I didn't want to be the first one to say it. No. Um, but I'll happily be the second. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> I think I drank that first beer a little too quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sweating slightly more than usual right now. Yeah, well, you could try wearing a dope fleece sweater. That's right. I'm sweating a little bit too, but... Ooh. Ugh. Busting out the cocktail glasses. That's right. So, you want the ginger beer or do you want uh, ginger ale? I, I want to say the ginger beer. Ginger beer. <laughs> cool. But that's okay. There we go. Thank you, sir. So, we're going a little bit lighter this time around. Um, uh, I wasn't feeling all that well yesterday. Rhett's not feeling all that well today. Yeah. Uh, so, we're going to go with a little bit more of a... Kind of a mocktail for Rhett and a slight cocktail for me because I don't have to drive home. Um, so just a little bit of ice. Uh, drop one on my stain's desk. There we go. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. I thought 3D gaming with Woo! two players on one screen without a split screen looked cool. I, I always wanted that Sony display that could do that and like the three games that it was capable of. <laughs> So I'm going to do a little Jameson and Ginger. And Red, did you want a little splash of Jameson? Or so you good? Oh, look. Just a splash. Just a splash. Just a splash. Just a splash. Everybody who's looking at this knows I'm on muscle relaxers. That's plenty. I'm, I'm good. Yeesh. I hurt my back. Yep. And uh, if I'm to have any hope to drive home at a reasonable hour, uh, I'm going to rely on my friends here in Craft Computing Studio to not judge me too harshly. That's right. Uh, especially you, the viewers. Um, I know I'm disappointing a lot of people, um, especially the other craft computing crew. Uh, I just need to apologize for that straight out. There's no excuse. Um, there is always an excuse to stop <laughs> drinking. That's. I guess that's true. Don't you know, worry about that. I'm going to set a good example for everybody tonight. That's right. Just have a little splash. Anyway, thank you, S1116JG1, for the uh, $25 donation. Thank that you, bro. Freaking awesome. We appreciate it here. We're going to cheers to this. Cheers. We're going to cheers to you. Cheers to you, buddy. And your good health. That's right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if we're going to quite make the two-hour mark tonight, because I'm I'm tired. I'm still not feeling all that well. Dude, I don't blame you. We'll, we'll probably get through a couple more news items, and then we may just call it a night. Call I'm it a little bit of a chair, just night. like wondering about life yeah uh so yeah intel shortages may continue yeah um let's jump down to games and entertainment here because i want to get to this yeah, news article next sure. um so this one came out early early today uh that sony is rumored to be attempting to acquire take two interactive now, if you don't know the parent company, I don't necessarily blame you because they don't do a lot of direct games. Yeah, it's not it's not very clear. But the uh, two big companies underneath their umbrella that you might be familiar with, uh, number one, made big splashes with a little game called Red Dead Redemption 2. Maybe you've heard of that one. Mm -hmm. um, they're called Rockstar. Rockstar and, Games. And indeed... Uh, they are kind of a rock star in the gaming industry. They are a game studio owned by Take-Two Interactive. Uh, and then the other one is 2K, which is, uh, I think, renowned for their 2K sports titles mm -hmm. um, and a number of other ones that I'm not going to be able to name for you. But Borderlands? Borderlands. Is, <laughs> uh, there you go. Number yeah. One. Uh, a little popular game. Maybe you guys have heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, it, it's got some fans out there. Anyway, so... Yeah, Sony is rumored to be attempting to acquire Take-Two Interactive. Now, this would have some pretty widespread ramifications on the gaming industry and the gaming landscape because 
Typically, Rockstar games have been multi-platform, although to PC they've been a little bit slower than they probably should have been. Yeah, wink, wink, cough, cough. Wink, wink, cough, cough. <laughs> um, and then 2K games are pretty well-renowned for being, number one, multi-platform, but, but overall of a pretty good quality, except for their 2K sports games, which just kind of churn out the same crap every year. Is Look, if you're a fan of those titles, I'm sure you really enjoy them. Yep. Um, I still play NBA 2K14, and I feel like I'm not missing anything from not playing NBA 2K19. Yeah, honestly, the last 2K sports titles I played was like 2K06. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really fun, but um, yeah, not really my thing. So yep. I don't judge you if it is. I'll, you know, more power to you. Yep. Although, uh, I think there was a PS Plus title that was free if you, of course, were a PS Plus subscriber, which was like TK16, maybe? Yep. Uh, NBA? I don't know. Um, Boris, $10 towards a solder rework station. <laughs> solder rework station. I dig it. Thank you, Boris. Hey, also, a few people in the chat mm -hmm. I just want to call out saying that uh, there's no shame in stopping drinking whenever you're ready, and uh, I want to... I want to just salute that line of thought and remind anybody watching that it's okay to drink responsibly occasionally. Right. Um, my show, I, I like to be about the drinking enthusiast, someone who really, really enjoys the craft of beer and cocktails and spirits and things like that. I certainly do, but I almost never overindulge. And, and I, yeah. I really, one of the hooks of my channel is, number one, I'm displaying what I'm drinking. But I'm trying to show myself drinking responsibly and, yep. and drinking for enjoyment, not out of necessity. And, and that is something that a lot of people struggle with. So if you're struggling with that, know that I'm not about that. I'm not yeah. about being an alcoholic and a drunk and, and day drinking and all that kind of stuff. I have maybe a cocktail a day, maybe a cocktail a day. Um, I have beer pretty much when I'm filming. Uh, yeah. anymore i i really enjoy it this is the first beer i've had in two weeks right <laughs> which you know i love beer i really do this is why we're on this on this channel right sharing our love of craft beer but but it is not uncommon for me to go three four days without a drink just yeah i, I don't need it i don't want it i don't crave it i don't yeah. anything else i just enjoy it and and that's the way it should be yeah so if you're struggling with it get help because there's help available and if you feel like you need to stop stop by all means uh, yeah. i i don't want to be a, a source of peer pressure that you feel like you need to keep up with me no. and it's amazing how many people call me out for being an alcoholic on my channel because every time i see you you have a drink in your hand yeah it's kind yeah. of the hook of the that's, show do you know what i do the other 23 hours and 40 minutes of every day not to drink yeah <laughs> so mm. And there's nothing wrong with a little mocktail every now and then. I That's know right. mine's got a little bit of booze in it, but mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, I, I love going out and, and drinking with people and just getting like club soda and lime. Oh, totally. Feels like you're drinking. Yep. I, I do a lot of ginger beer. A lot of ginger beer and well, lime. You know how I feel about ginger beer. Oh, so. so good. So good. <laughs> That's pretty much all I had in freaking mm -hmm. Vegas that mm -hmm. one night. We just mm -hmm. That was a good time. That was a good time. Ginger beer for the win. Yep. A little extra spice for you. That's right. So, yeah, that is the, uh, the point of my channel, and, uh, and I hope that comes across. Someone says uh, that I come across responsible to him. I'll count it as a win. Thank you, sir. That's right. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, but that was Bendy. Meantime... Bendy says that. Oh, How's nice. it going, Bendy? Um, so, yeah. Uh... In the meantime, this is kind of a big move, especially because it kind of paves the way for some powerhouse exclusive titles, which... You know, granted, aren't necessarily the money makers. However, you can leverage some serious console sales if you uh, do timed exclusives right. and things like that. Can you imagine if Red Dead Redemption 2 and Grand Theft Auto 5 were console exclusive to the PlayStation? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They would yeah. have sold a lot of consoles. Yep. Now, even if you do six months of console exclusive, you're moving a lot of consoles. That's there right. are people that can't wait to play games. And granted... I bought Red Dead Redemption 2, you know, 30 days after release, which is something I almost never do. Right. Um, but there have been games that sold me consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not afraid to admit No Man's Sky sold me a PlayStation 4. Do I regret it? Not at all. Love the game. It's amazing. What a true comeback story. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then not only that, but games like Last Guardian, mm -hmm. uh, made by the makers of Shadow of the Colossus, one of my favorite uh sony exclusives but anyway if red dead redemption 2 had been an exclusive 
uh, you bet your ass if I didn't already have a PlayStation 4, I would have bought one. Yeah. What an amazing title. Um, it's just a bold move. Yeah. Imagine things like Borderlands being a console exclusive. Uh, all of these sports titles, which are already already sell like hotcakes for some reason. Right. Not saying you're wrong if you enjoy them. Just saying I don't quite understand it. Um, they sell lots of copies. So now imagine that just going down the pipe. If you want to play the latest 2K sports exclusive, you got to be doing it on a PlayStation. Exactly. You probably got to buy a PlayStation. Um, this is just a bold, big move. I'm kind of into it. Why not? I mean, yeah, yes and exclusivity no. Exclusivity is never necessarily a good thing for the market, and I don't think that I don't. But I don't think that the games market is ever going to go back to that. Well, yes and no, because if you look at the way the digital stores are going, with the way that Epic Games is trying to scoop up exclusives, and it's not going to work. And EA it owns the the Origin store, and they're trying to be exclusive, and BattleNet is doing their own thing, and. Whoever else has their own online exclusive store, Ubisoft. Ubisoft still says on Steam, but you know it's only a matter of time before they go screw it, take out the middleman. Yeah. We'll just pull all of our Assassin Creed games off of uh, Steam, and we'll go exclusive to uh, to Uplay. But then, um, you know, and that's the big question. All right, this is a real stupid question, but like, how many consoles is Ubisoft shipping? Ubisoft isn't. But I mean, with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, how many consoles do right. they sell? Uh, probably yeah. none because you can get that game on any console. But right. but my point is, if you're giving Steam a twenty percent cut versus a zero percent cut if you own the storefront, that's enticing to some penny pushers. Yeah, some accountants See? back there. Right. You know how I feel about accountants making decisions. That's right. I, I guess that's a point that I hadn't considered. It just feels that in this day and age, I remember you know ten years ago, fifteen years ago, you used to have lots of exclusives. Yeah lots yeah um it just doesn't seem that uh that prevalent anymore mm -hmm. um and i feel like that's because there's too much money at stake to sell a game entirely for one platform that's true um so yeah sure if you can make an extra 20 percent selling it on your store for your platform yeah but does that make up entirely for the loss that you're getting not selling uh, to you know, on Xbox or so, some other digital. Right, app. and that's the thing is the more platforms you can be on, the higher your sales are going to be, yeah, and absolutely. it's going to more than make up for your lost infrastructure costs of only selling on one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll see. I guess only time will tell. Um, it's kind of a big move for Sony. Yeah. Yeah. Take Two is a huge, huge, huge company. So yep. at least in, you know in the game space. Um, there's not that many of them like that. I'm going to kind of go rapid fire because all of a sudden I'm not feeling all that well. Yeah. Um, we only so, got a few more left. Yep. Uh, so Microsoft releasing DirectX for Windows 7 and the first title will be World of Warcraft. Uh, so three years after they said that DirectX 12 will be a Windows 10 exclusive, they're releasing it for Windows 7 with only eight months left before it's in infinite demise. <laughs> um, curious, curious move. Uh, as far as why Microsoft agreed to announce to release this, because I'm sure Microsoft didn't come to the table and said, "Guys, we got to get DirectX 12 onto Windows 7. It's really going to help us out with sales." This was a couple of game companies coming together and saying, "Guys, we have a large number of our user base on Windows 7. Yeah. You need to launch DirectX 12 so we can kill our old game client." Yeah. And this was Blizzard pressing Microsoft to release DirectX 12, but it just seems weird that Microsoft would yield to that pressure. It's a huge user it's, base. It's a huge user base, and it's a lot of money there. But it seems weird that Microsoft would cave to that pressure. And I'm wondering if this could open up lawsuits on the back end, because this could be a bait-and-switch kind of marketing thing, where you said, I would have to upgrade to Windows 10 to get DirectX 12. Well, a game that I wanted to buy was DirectX 12 only. I had to upgrade because that was the only forced path. And now, three years later, you're releasing it. So I would have been just fine staying on Windows 7. Yeah. There, there may be some avenues for some legal ramifications here. Maybe, but is anybody out money for switching to Windows 10? Uh, yeah, actually. Because even now, you can still upgrade to Windows 10 for free using the accessibility backdoor. Right, but that's not necessarily an approved backdoor. 
it works, it'll get you a license, but that's not necessarily the way that 90% of the consumers go. I guess that's a good point. So you have to go on what the consumer dollar did, not what is possible. And what the consumer dollar did was they either paid for a Windows 10 license or they were forcibly upgraded from Windows 7 That's true. against I, their will. Yeah, I suppose you can't count on every single consumer just being like, all right, right. we're going to use this accessibility. Right. Uh, you Your know, mom needs a Windows 10 license. How, you know. Yeah. Because she can't see. Right. She can't hear. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> your mom. Your mom. Your mom. <laughs> what are you? So, 12? yeah. Just just very curious that that Microsoft decided to go down this route. Yeah. Um, it is interesting. Well, I guess we could just have to see how it plays out. You, you yeah. bring up a good point. I think that... Uh, Will it also work on Windows 8 or 8.1? No. This is uh, released to Windows 7 only. And this is a new feature to Windows 7 two years after they stopped making new features for Windows 7. Yeah. I guess we'll see what they roll out for 8, huh? Mm-hmm. Maybe in two more years they'll be like, all right. <laughs> uh, Halo Master Chief Edition coming to PC, Windows Store, and Steam. Yep, this is pretty big. So speaking of multiple platforms that you can possibly buy something on, yeah, this is big news. Uh, when I saw that Master Chief... Master Chief Collection was coming to Windows. I went, oh, great. They're trying to push people to Windows Store. It's going to be a Windows Store exclusive. Yeah. And wanna... no. no. Then the Steam logo popped up at the end of the trailer. And you yeah. went. Yeah. So this is going to sell a million copies. I think Easily. it's going Easily. to. Easily. I think it's going to. It's. Uh, who doesn't love these games? Yeah. Honestly. I will buy them again. I will. Why yep. not? And it includes Reach as well as. Halo 1, does it include... You get ODST? Yeah, you get two, ODST. 2, 3, 4... Dude, like, what are you even wasting time for? This is a no-brainer. Right. All of these games have a stellar standalone campaign, mm-hmm. but that's not even touching on the hours of multiplayer that you can get. Right. Who in God's green earth didn't play Warthog Wars in Blood Gulch, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, this is, this is huge. And... Uh, also, how great that's not ex- exclusive. Right. Yeah. Not exclusive. Now, by the way, this was a, an Xbox exclusive because the Master Chief Collection has already been available on Xbox. Sure. But they are moving it over to PC. And this is not just a port of the Xbox. This is made for PC. This is all resolutions available. So you can play this on ultra wide. You can play yeah. this on 4K. You can play this with anti-aliasing and all the, the other graphical benefits that come from running this on DirectX 11 or 12. Uh, this is pretty big news that Microsoft is uh, is yeah. pushing this route. Uh, Skull's got a good idea. Blood Gulch in the Patreon Discord on Saturdays. That's it's a on, good idea. It's on. It's on. Uh, I just gotta wait for the price to drop a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then our last bit of news. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a, well, take two interactive tees from 2K Games. But this is official Twitter. March 28th, Boston, Massachusetts. Borderlands 3. Borderlands. Do you see the the top up there? It says Exit 3. Yep. Yeah. Smart. Borderlands 3. By the way, scroll down to uh, Microsoft's reaction. (laughs) Huge announcement. Yeah. For a popular title. Hopefully it's not going to be a PS5 exclusive. Probably not. Well, hopefully not. Well, well hopefully I that guess sale we'll doesn't see go through. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Hopefully that sale doesn't go through. I feel like even if they do, yeah, I think the worst we're going to be looking at is a timed exclusive. Yep. Six months of exclusivity to sell some PlayStations. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it past Sony to make it just an exclusive title, though. Because that's what they do with a lot of their IP. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't put it past them. And that, that worries me for the for the future of gaming. Uh, of all of a sudden I have to buy three or four different consoles. Like I already have to buy the Mario titles on just a Switch and I have to buy the God of War and See, and that's and, kind of and like... the Last of Us on only the PlayStation. What happens if the the third party AAA titles start being bought up by these large companies? You know though, like and maybe this is just me, the type of consumer I am. But I get my console, that's what I've got. And 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 that's fine for most people, but but at the moment, your one console can run 80% of the games that are out there. What happens if all of a sudden it's 
And if you want to play more, and you have to make your buying decision I based mean, off that 20%. My console can run 0% of the Nintendo games I want to play. That's true. I mean, this is Nintendo's business model, and almost nobody has a problem with it. Right. You know, and granted... I, I don't think we have a problem with Nintendo's business model, because only Nintendo so far is following that business model. Yeah. Where they say not the majority of our titles are going to be first party. However, do you remember the and they excitement? They have been forever. Though. And they, they have been forever. However, do you remember the excitement when Doom and, and Skyrim were announced that they were coming out for the Switch and Diablo 3 yeah. and some of these third party AAA games that have never been available on, on Nintendo are all of a sudden available. Yeah. That was pretty big news. And and so Nintendo all of a sudden is, is opening up its doors a little bit and yeah. allowing more of the market to kind of come into it. And of course it. you get the indie marketplace that is just flocking to the yes. Switch too. Yeah. So you are getting a lot more. Right. But but all of a sudden you have Sony and Microsoft both trying to kind of close off their own walls and going, you know what? What happens if we have God of War and we have Last of Us and we've got, uh, a couple, we've got Gran Turismo and a couple other big, big titles. single, you know, IPs. first party titles. We're also now going to own Red Dead Redemption, Bully, Grand Theft Auto, and Borderlands, as well as the 2K games. So screw you, EA. We don't want you on our platform making Madden anymore. We have now I mean, a 2K football game. We've got a 2K basketball game. We've got this and we've got that. Do I feel bad about that? I don't know. <laughs> Granted, it doesn't benefit me necessarily. Right. I guess it, I guess the only option is we have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. this. You bring up a lot of really valid points that I just... See, and I'm always, I'm already always so skeptical of the game place market, anyways. Mm -hmm. But I also don't spend as much money as probably the next consumer. Do you know my problem with Nintendo being a first party market only? It's that the pricing never ever goes down. Yeah. And so, um, that's my main problem with it. But it's the only console that I felt like I could buy that I legitimately can't get any of the other games on. So I bought a, a Switch just so I could play Breath of the Wild and a couple other first-party titles. Yeah. And that was it. Um, but I'm okay paying that price for those particular games. Yeah. However, you're not going to get Zelda for 20 bucks all of a sudden in two years. It's no. still going to be a $60 game. Same. That's how all their games are even to this day. Right. So it, All of their games are original price at least. You know, you might get a $20 discount. Maybe the Mario plus Raving Rabbids is down from 60 to 40 or something like maybe, that. Maybe, yeah. But you're not going to get those huge discounts because they own the store. They own the outlet. They're the yeah. only place you can buy these things from. And if all of a sudden every other console has an entire library full of exclusive like Nintendo does, they're going to follow that same market set. Yeah. And, you know, and that's bad for the consumer overall. I made, a, I made a prediction that 2019 would see a price fall for the Switch uh, before the summer. I hope that sticks true. I don't... Mm. I'm, as, as the year moves on, I don't think we're going to. I don't to. think it's going to happen. But it felt... It felt... Look... Christmas time, no. 2018. I could have swore before Q2. I think I think by Thanksgiving we're at 249, but I don't think it goes any lower than that. <sighs> yeah, probably not. But that's already a pretty good price for a brand new yeah, console, especially absolutely. one that uh, is as you know, you can go handheld, you can go not. <coughs> I mean, yep, that's powerful. That's, oh, totally. You get what you pay for. Right. Um, One of my favorite things now is uh, I take my daughter to ballerina uh, rehearsals every Saturday now. And I go in there and I, I pay attention for about the first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes. But in the middle, I'm playing Rocket League. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, so that's been working out pretty well for us. Um, anyway, I think that's a good place to end. Yeah, why not? Like I said, I'm a little... Uh, I, I hurt my back today. Yeah. It's not been a good week for us. I, I'm actually fresh off the flu, too. So. Yeah, yeah, you were sick all last week. It so. was bad, dude. I, I was in bed the <laughs> whole time. You guys want to hear something real gross before we sign off? Ooh, let's go for it. So uh, I think yeah, with my flu, I was having some serious lung discharge. Uh -huh. And I had a bucket that I was coughing this discharge into. Uh -huh. And it just happened to have little measuring notches in it. And one day, well, probably like 32 hours, I'll say. Maybe. Did you hit the two liter mark? That's what I want to know. Two liters, let's see. A liter, two liters is what, 32 ounces? Yeah. Yeah, I okay. was going to say. I hit about that 30 to 32 ounce mark. Nice. It was disgusting. Yeah. It was disgusting. Yeah. Into the bucket. Yep. Out of my lungs. Yep. And that's not accounting for evaporation over eight hours. Oh, God. 
And that's not even counting what came out of my nose. Either. Right. Like, right. this is, like, purely, like, me leaning over me. Like, <coughs> yeah. Like, not, oh, Jesus, why are we talking about this? <laughs> it just brings back horrible memories. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. Episode 73 of Talking Heads. It has been a great show. Thanks, guys. If you want to financially back the channel, look me up on Patreon. Link is down in the video description below. Minimum donation of a dollar gets you access to the exclusive Discord server where you can chat with us throughout the week, as well as John and Steve, who are not here right now. But join me on the other episodes. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. It has been a blast. And uh, same bat time, same bat channel next week. Right? Anything else? No, I think that about does it. Cool. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Catch you later. Cheers.